Hey, what's going on everyone? This is EDC for fun. My name is Dennis. Thanks for checking out the video. Right now we're looking at my Spyderco Para 3. This one was customized by Knives Plus. It's got lightning anode, titanium scales, uh, heat anodized hardware, got a Lynch Northwest deep carry clip on there, as well as an acid etched and stone washed S45 VN blade. As much as I love this knife, I thought it was time for a change. So this package I have here from AWT is a new set of scales. We're going to put these on the pair of three. And here we go. All right, so this is going to be our first look at AWT's burlap micarta scales so if you follow the channel you know that i'm a big fan of awt this is a manix 2 with their aluminum agent series liner delete scales and here we have a shaman also with the agent series uh, clip side liner delete aluminum scales very impressed with those. I've really been enjoying them ever since I had them. And I saw that they make micarta. Now these do not delete the liners, um, but I thought I would try them out anyway because I was really interested uh, being impressed by the fit and the finish of the Agent Series aluminum scales. Wanted to see how they do with their micarta. And this of course is their black burlap. And right away, I really love the feel of these. Oh, check it out, check that out. Got a little AWT milled in there. That's pretty sick. But what I was concerned about with the burlap, what I wasn't sure about was that they would be uh, too smooth, that it would basically be, you know, all resin and no, you know, not so much burlap as far as the feel goes, but you can definitely feel the fibers. You can definitely feel the texture on here. And um, by the way, these are the skinny uh, scales. So when these go on, they are going to essentially remove that belly right there. And they do follow uh, the form of the other AWT scales as far as the chamfering goes all the way around the edges. They are very nicely chamfered. There is an indexing point right there, but it is a skinny scale, so there's no belly. You've got that little index and then everything else is thinned out. So really excited to get these on, check out the fit and the finish. Uh, hopefully they go on smoothly and uh, don't affect the function of the knife at all. Everything that I've experienced with AWT for the most part has been really good. I did have a small issue with the Shaman. There was a little bit of, um, was it lock stick or blade play I don't remember when I first put these on but it worked itself out and I've since been very happy with these so yeah definitely excited to check out the burlap micarta these look like they're going to age and patina very nicely by the way of course the uh, burlap will take on natural oils and dirt and whatnot start to darken up and just looking at these milling lines here for the liners very clean crisp milling here I don't see any witness marks from the tooling, so that's very encouraging. All right, so we'll go ahead and set these aside and start taking this guy apart. And I will go ahead and start with the show side. So we've got a T8 and a T10. And we'll grab the Weeha. And I've got an eight in here. Pivot is a 10. We'll see if this guy plays nicely and comes off, and it sure does. Okay, very good. So we'll just keep that intact. I'm going to wipe a little bit of this oil off. Go ahead and pop this guy on there. <laughs> it's already got a little bit of oil on there. Seems to fit very well. Everything looks as it should. We'll go ahead and pop the pivot. 
pivot screw back in. Actually, you know what? I completely forgot. I can't believe that I forgot that. This is insane. I was so anxious to just get recording. I completely forgot. <laughs> I ordered new hardware um, because these are heat anodized bronze, uh, which I I'm not sure if I really want on here. Um, so I grabbed some black hardware from AWT. It's actually from Knives Plus, but AWT sells it, which is pretty sweet. So, wow, I can't believe I forgot. Crazy. Um, let's go ahead and take this back off. So that means I'm going to have to pull the lanyard tube. I'm going to have to do everything. Go ahead and pull this off. I might have to just tear the whole thing down. Go ahead and pull the blade off so I don't cut myself. Yeah, stop pin, everything. Every, every, everything. All right, well, we'll go ahead and just pull all these screws out because that was my original plan. Wow, I cannot believe I forgot that. Pop a T6 in here. Go ahead and pop the clip off. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, got a little ahead of myself there. Didn't even remember that I ordered hardware. Didn't see it in the bag. Completely forgot. I'm definitely laughing at myself right now. Screws popping out. All right, I might have to punch that guy out. We'll see. See if I can get it with a tool. Yep. And see if I can get this without scratching anything or grabbing my punch or let's see. I'm gonna come nah, I don't need to come back to that. I'll do it now. Let's see if I can just do it. Yep. Popped right out. No fuss, no muss. And get this liner out of there. We will move our tie scales to the side. Do a little more wipey wipe. And we'll go ahead and pull our bronze, phosphor bronze washers off of there. And just, since we have everything apart, go ahead and wipe it down. I did just sharpen this guy, by the way. Um, I think Spyderco from the factory does like 18 degrees per side and then I did this one at 15 and I think it turned out really nice. It's very sharp. Uh, S45VN is um, relatively easy to sharpen and takes a really nice edge just like S35VN, just like S30. Really really good steel. I'm definitely a fan of the S30 family. Okay. All right now that we have that out of the way we will go ahead and see what we have in our hardware now it says complete hardware so let's verify now this hardware by the way is stainless um, everything that i had in there before was titanium um, not that it matters but just in case you're curious all right here's our lanyard it's got some screws stuck inside there that's funny Get out of there. And just kind of, before we start installing, just make sure there's no defects. Which there aren't. So I'll go ahead and pop that on there. And these only go in one way. And we have our stop pin. Everything looks good. Okay, and I think the pivot barrel is the only thing that it doesn't come with. Just looking through what I have here, and that is accurate. So we do need to reuse that. It's got some gunk in there. Let's clean that off. Got a little bit of Loctite flakes. That's good to go. Now, it may be hard to see, but we do have a flat spot right there. 
Uh, so we do need to be conscious of that. This will only work one way. And this um, side here of the liner does have a flat spot in there. So we're gonna match that. Otherwise it will not install properly. So pop that washer on there and pop the pivot barrel. Now we can go ahead and put our screw in there. Okay. While I have that there, I'm just gonna put a dab of KPL. All good. Go ahead and just inspect that real quick. And this is really cool. Whenever you do like an acid etch, you do have to put something um, around the contact points uh, to make sure that you don't disturb the action. So you can see here, this all this steel is clean. They probably applied some type of like nail polish or uh, something like that where you can put it on and then dip it in the uh, acid and it will preserve those areas. So that way when you take it out of the acid, uh, you remove that area, uh, re you know, remove the protecting film on there and it preserves it. So pretty cool. Pop that guy on there. We'll get a little dab of the KPL there. Grab our other washer. Now you can buy, when you buy hardware from Knives Plus, you can get uh, new washers and stuff. Um, I didn't feel the need to, so I didn't. Uh, let's see, okay, we've got that. Oh, we're going to need our standoff here. And what we'll do is go ahead and just shut that for a second. And we're going to need to pop this through there. And I'm just going to hand thread the standoff barrel spacer, whatever you want to call it. Open that back up. Now we can go ahead and put our liner in. Everything's lining up very nicely. Grab our scale. And that is going to press down onto the stop pin there. So you want to make sure we're in all the way, which it looks like we are. Go ahead and drop our body screw, our pivot screw. We're going to press this down and tighten our pivot first. Now you might notice I always go counterclockwise first just to make sure it's not um, cross threading and then I start to go clockwise. We'll go ahead and finger tight that. Then we will do our body screw. Sweet, that's looking good. All right, and I'm going to switch this out because my Weeha bit here, my T8 uh, wingtip bit or whatever, is starting to wear a little bit. So as I tighten this down, I want to use a fresher bit so I don't strip anything. So we got, nope, that's a T10. And here's our T8. Now it is sticking up above the surface a little bit, so I'm going to back that side off, see if I can tighten this side down a little bit more. All right, I'm going to have to come back to that. I'm not sure if it's a scale thickness issue or what, but it is not completely flush. It's not like a problem or anything but this side is completely flush and this side I can feel it just a little bit I don't want to over tighten it in case I'm not threading straight so I'm just gonna leave it as is for now and come back to it I'm gonna hit the pivots and just kind of work them in a little bit just like an eighth of a turn back and then a quarter of a turn forward. 
just so everything's going in without being wrenched down. Take another look at these body screws. It's possible that barrel spacer has a flat spot on it. I'm gonna take this apart real quick and just look at that in case I missed that detail. Oh, that side came out, but this side didn't. Come on, play nice. Alright, so when I press this down, it does sit flush, so for some reason, it's just not sitting flush when it gets tightened. So I'm going to back this off, see if I can see anything. Oof, that is stuck in there. Maybe it was cross-threaded. So to get that out... I'm going to have to do one of these. It does not want to cooperate. All right, I'm going to put it in my vise, which is right off to the side here. get it off that way so yeah for some reason it is not threading in very nicely so I'm hoping that it's not an issue with the tap in this barrel spacer or the thread on the screws and I'm gonna try this again and hopefully we don't have the same issue but there's no there's no collars or shoulder or anything like that that I can see so it's not like it only goes on a certain way um, and I certainly don't remember that with the pair of three um, I know that is the case with other models like on my Spidey Chef um, these standoffs have flat spots on them so that they can only go in a certain way but this guy should be good no matter how you put it on there. And that's flush like that. Let me try flipping the barrel spacer. Of course, now I don't know which way it was. All right, that's flush that way. Let's see if I can pull that off without dropping it. Damn it. Freaking A. Flush. And it's definitely flush both ways. So if there's an issue, it's going to be with this scale on this side. Hopefully not. Hopefully it was just my mistake on the first go around there. It might have something to do with that stop pin because it does need to be pressed in. Let's push that down as hard as we can. We'll drop our body screw in, and then this time we're going to do this screw first. Okay. This time we are flush. So while I have it flush, I'm going to close the blade, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this up as is because I don't want to lose that. And hopefully when it comes to the action, I don't need to adjust that again. All right, so now that the body screws are flush, look at that, we're set, uh, almost centered, but I don't have a pivot screw in. We'll drop that guy in there. Just 
snug. All right, now everything is nice and flush. Our action is very tight, so we're gonna need to back the pivots off a little bit. And it is favoring this side just a tiny little bit. T8, I want T10. Still very tight. That feels much smoother. And we are almost dead nut center. It still is favoring that side a little bit. There is a slight bit of, very, very slight bit of blade wobble there. So let's see if this guy drops, which, yeah, definitely drops. And I may have to find the sweet spot and then lock tight it. Okay, now we're rock solid, but no, of course it's not gonna drop. Also might need to just break in a little bit. Micarta being a natural material, it is gonna have a little bit of flex in it. So it's possible that what I did with the body screws here, torquing them down is playing a role. And you can see by loosening these body screws, the blade definitely kicked over that way. No play, but we are very tight. I'm going to come back to tuning that in the way I want it and I'm going to put a pocket clip on here. Now I'm not going to put this guy back on there because the colors don't match. I'm going to grab, this is the pocket clip actually that came with this one. It is acid, es acid etched and stone washed uh, just like the blade. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the standard Spyderco clip on the Pair 3 because it does ride very high, but I'm going to try it. Um, it's been a while since I've carried it like that, and um, yeah, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. These are T6s. Hopefully I don't have any issues with the clip, which right away, that's not a good sign. I did read um, one review where somebody said the holes were not drilled exactly to fit. Okay, that, that one went in there. So we'll go ahead and do the other one, and then we'll come back to that center screw. Those two went in, no problem. There we go, must have just been a fluke. Tighten these bad boys down. And we don't want to torque them, this is a T6, so you do have to be careful not to strip them out. That's good enough. And there we have it. Looks really cool. Really like the feel of this micarta. It feels fantastic. So this is going to be my new pair of three setup. Go ahead and get a feel for the ergos here. Definitely liking the skinny feel. It definitely uh, made a difference on the Manix and also on the Shaman. So I'm very excited to try that out now on the pair of three.
slightest bit, just the slightest bit of blade wobble there. So I'm going to, after I stop recording here, I'm going to find the sweet spot um, where this guy has the right amount of action and no blade play, and then I'm just going to Loctite that. That way that's not an issue. Um, but yeah, I'm really digging this. Feels great. Looks really cool. It's got a much more kind of subdued, rustic kind of look to it. And I'm psyched. Yeah, so I'm definitely a fan of AWT. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, the Manix worked out well. The Shaman worked out well. And the Para 3 looks like it's going to be no different. Um, got the black hardware on there from Knives Plus. And this thing is looking killer, man. So... I really appreciate you guys uh, stopping by and watching the videos. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, just say what's up. Leave me a like. Subscribe if you're not already. I really appreciate it, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. God bless you. See ya.